Today I'm going to show you the difference between the wash away stabilizers and the main purpose though is to show you how to use a floater stabilizer when you are using wash away stabilizer. In addition to the wash away you'll use a floater. And first I want to show you that this is a wash away that gets confused with the backing stabilizer. You use this as a topper. It's the opaque, kind of filmy sort of feel to it. And I used it on this vest because I used the furry felt and the embroidery designs would have gotten down into the fur and you wouldn't be able to see them real well if I had not put the topper on. You will do this whenever you have napped fabrics and whenever you have towels, you always want to have a topper. And it's very easy to get off. And what you do, you just cut a piece the size of your embroidery design and you place it on your fabric before you do the embroidery. And after the embroidery is done, then you just tear it. It'll just tear right off very easily. And whatever little pieces are left, you can easily get off with just a damp cloth. So that is the topper. Now what we use for the backing when you back a fabric with stabilizer is the woven type that looks like this and there's Pellon, there's Floriani has one, and there's just a number of different manufacturers and they all are, are very good. Now I have hooped a piece of wash away stabilizer in this hoop. I'm going to show you, you know when you use the wash away and then you have to rinse it off it can cause, it, you know, if you rinse it completely out, you can end up with this kind of a real soft, floppy um, mat or placemat or bookmark or whatever it is you're, you're using it for. Um, and you might want that in some instances, but a lot of times you'll want it a little stiffer, like this is. Now what I used to say was do not uh, put this, just do not submerge it into the water and soak it so that if you do want a stiffer mat, just just run your water along the edges and then let that dry. Well, I have since decided the better, the better way to do this is to, and after your placement line has gone down, and this is a coaster, after your placement line has gone down on the wash away stabilizer, and typically there's going to be some batting put on most, most everything, you would put your batting on and at the same time take a piece of cutaway or tearaway stabilizer and just float it underneath the hoop. When that batting is tacked down, this cutaway or, or tearaway is also going to get tacked down on the back. Now what we do when we put our batting down, we make that tack line, tack down line just slightly inside the placement line. And the reason for that is so that when you trim that, that will give you some area to that will be uh, will have no batting on it and will make your edges much cleaner. And because there's a tendency to get the wispies from the batting into that edge, and that, that eliminates that if you if we have it on the tack down on the inside. And then so you could trim that, and you would also trim your floater on the back. So you would just turn it over and trim that in the same way that you did the batting on the front side. Now what that will do is that after the whole entire design has been stitched out, you can take your finished project and you can soak it in water and, and get all of that residue out of this wash away. But you'll have a stiffer mat, coaster, whatever it is you're doing, bookmark, and um, I think you'll be happier with it. And this, just, this is just what I've started adding to our instructions. Up until now, they have not been on, on the instructions. So you know now that um, if you have instructions that don't say to do this and you prefer this method, just, just do this instead. And this applies to any design that has the raw edges, like our satin edged mug mats, our coasters, our bookmarks, and some of our freestanding flowers, that sort of thing. Um, Anytime you have those exposed edges and you're going to put a satin stitch down, you're going to use you're going to need to use wash away stabilizer in the hoop. Otherwise, if you put if you take a if you hoop cutaway or tearaway in the hoop 
and you stitch directly on that, when you remove that from the hoop, you have to cut around that stabilizer and it is impossible not to have stabilizer showing on the edges and that is just a pet peeve of mine. I can't stand that. So I hope you enjoyed our Tuesday tip for this.